All right, let's see it. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. <laughs> Look at all the babies. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody. It's Robin with Creativity RV, and I'm here with my new friend, Alexandra, and, and her six buddies, um, because Alexandra <laughs> lives in a 31-foot Class C with six dogs and she's doing some rescue efforts on the road so we're going to hear about that and also why she chose an RV life. Yeah. yeah. By the way you guys we're going to get a tour in a minute and it is really really cool in here and I'm excited to show it to you. But first um, why did you choose to live on the road? How long have you been doing it? And tell us about the dogs. Cool yeah so um, I've actually always wanted to travel in an RV. I love traveling. I get bored easily and so being able to wander quickly on my own schedule. Um, I bought an RV about two years ago maybe um, and I've been saving and redoing as much as I can in it. Um, there's still plenty I'd love to to fix up. Um, I did not plan on necessarily doing rescue stuff on the road. Uh, the RV trip was really just for me to wander. Um, and then somehow I ended up with six dogs. I doubled in size of dogs. It's just impossible for me to wander around and not do rescue work. Right. There's just, there's no way I could not do something with rescues. Um, and so, um, I tried to kind of piece together things that I could do on the road, um, helpful things for other people and dogs in general. <laughs> Tell us about the dogs. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, we've got Bugsy over there trying to give you kisses in your face. He's a five-year-old border collie that, um, we... Oh my god. <laughs> he just laid his little head on the pillow. Like... <laughs> he oh. is so sweet. Um, I got him from uh, a friend in California. She was, um, on set in New Mexico and they found four of them. And she brought him home and, uh, was going to use him for set work. He's a really anxious, nervous dog, and so he just didn't do well, mm -hmm. um, and he ended up getting parvo mm. and uh, while she was out of town, and so I took him to the vet and treated him, and then he, was, he became my dog. <laughs> nice. Um, Charlie, my big 11-year-old Great Pyrenees, <laughs> is, is my OG dog. I've had him longer than anybody. Yeah, aren't you pretty? <laughs> Um, face. Yeah, he's an old man, and he's come a long, long, long way. He was found on the side of the road, um, and I adopted him from some friends when he was about three. Wow. So he had a lot of behavior issues when I got him. He yeah, actually, you can't tell. Yeah, he was not nice when what I got a, him. Are you kidding? He was very mean to people. He destroyed blinds, two wooden doors, and a metal door when I got him. He was awful. He's um, a dog. And he's an angel. He's my, he, uh, she's a good boy now. Um, and then this is Omar, my little chug. He's a four-year-old Chihuahua pug. I got him from Austin Pets Alive when he was about six months old. Um, I gave him one week. I gave this face one week to get adopted. And you know what adopted you? So then I well, I'm, I, every dog, I'm like, I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. <laughs> I know. I'm sure big yeah. boy, my cat would love that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, Clearly yeah, so, I have a yeah. problem. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, I've got a little chow down here. She's about 12. Um, I got her from a shelter in San Antonio when she was about two. She came mm -hmm. in pregnant, um, caught in a hog trap. Yep, she was uh, super matted and just disgusting. We actually didn't even know she was pregnant because she was so just fluffy and matted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, she gave birth at the shelter the next day, and so I took them all home to foster them. Mm -hmm. And all the puppies got adopted, and then I foster failed her and kept her. <laughs> <laughs> when so. you say foster fail, you yeah. mean that uh, you were supposed to just foster, and then you ended up adopting them yep. permanently? <laughs> yep. That's what I would do, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then I've got a little 13-year-old Chihuahua over there who's deaf. Um, I got him from the San Antonio shelter. He uh, came in as a hoarding dog. About 15 Chihuahuas came in in pretty bad conditions. Um, and he was the oldest one, and he was my office dog, actually, while I worked there. And uh, after about a month, they finally were off their cruelty hold to be adopted. Mm -hmm. um, and a rescue was going to pull all of them. Mm -hmm. And she told me that because he was so old, he probably wouldn't get adopted. And he would just kind of live in a sanctuary situation. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I couldn't. So I adopted him that day. Of course. <laughs> oh, here um, he comes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, buddy. Oh, cutie. 
Um, and then I've got an eight month old pit bull in the back who's crying because he doesn't like being in the kennel. <laughs> yeah. Well, he normally does actually, but he doesn't like being in there when there's another human in the RV. <laughs> right. Right. What's his story? Um, so he came into the city shelter, um, about two and a half months ago. He was six months old. Um, and his owners decided to get some, I don't even know how they anesthetize him somehow on their in their kitchen and knocked him out and cut his ears off. Why, why, why would you cut a dog's ears off? Everyone, I guess, just has this notion that a pit bull's ears need to be cropped. And they did a horrible job. Um, he came in, he, they got reported on Facebook. Um, and so our ACOs went and picked him up and he was in horrible pain. His ears looked awful. He cried every time he moved. Um, and so he had to sit on hold because he was under investigation for about a month. Um, and so I ended up spending a lot of time with him and mm -hmm. working with him. And mm -hmm. um, a lot of people wanted him just kind of for the wrong reasons. He became locally famous, I guess. They, you know, they were featuring him on all sorts of news outlets and stuff. Right. Um, and I just fell in love with him. And so I wanted him to grow up to be a better pit bull advocate and not go into the wrong hands. You know, right. he's, he's a beautiful dog. He's really sweet. Um, and now he's got these, you know, cropped pity ears that make him look mean. Um, and so I wanted him to be a bit, a good pit bull advocate. And I've always wanted a pity, um, but with restrictions and now I don't have any restrictions. I have my own home and can do yeah, exactly. wander around. Oh, that's true because a lot of places won't take you if you've got a pit bull or mm -hmm. a chow to, to rent. Yep. yep. And also I can tell you it's hard to get insurance. Yeah. When you get homeowners or renters insurance, they mm -hmm. ask you. And so for people in RVs, those are yeah. some good rescues. Yeah. A lot of people don't know about this lifestyle, and so they right. don't realize, like, you're traveling everywhere. You're doing such cool stuff with your dog. They're going on hikes every day, right. walks, new smells. I think there's just a poetry to adopting a dog when you hit the road because you get out of your own cage, and you set yourself free, and then you get to take another little soul with you yeah. on the road where they get to see new things every day and not be trapped in a house hoping you're going to come home and let it out to walk it. Yeah. And I, I just think that's like really beautiful. You can experience your nomadic life with another person sitting beside you. Mm -hmm. Well, in my mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a great lifestyle. Yeah. 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 Like, another person's going to be with you. I know. Yeah. I have six people with me. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great lifestyle for dogs. A lot of people think like, oh, I travel too much or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a fantastic lifestyle for mm -hmm. them. My dogs are so happy. They don't even care when it's raining and we have to sit inside all day. Right, they because, love you. Yeah, they're yeah. happy in here. They have plenty of room. Um, and they're going to get outside and run around and smell stuff that they've never smelled or seen before. And so they, right. they're, this is the happiest any of my dogs have ever been. Yeah, so you yeah. didn't originally start you know, wanting to do a rescue on the road. You just wanted to wander and then you fell in love with all these guys. Yeah. <laughs> and so you're in 31 feet here with um, six dogs. How's it work out? Um, pretty well. You know, sometimes we all get in each other's way, but honestly, 99.9% .9 of the time, it works out fantastic. It's your floor plan you've created in here is so open. Yeah. It's like, it's like my first studio apartment in here. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, which is like yeah. 250 square feet or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's great in here and you guys will see it in a minute. Um, well, that's great, but I, you said you wanted to take your rescue efforts on the road. Yes. So what are, what are you doing on the road um, that you can tell us about? Um, so I'm doing a couple of things and it's all kind of unraveling as I go and I try to think of new things as I'm on the road and what I can do to help. Um, but currently, the biggest thing that I'm trying to do is build a database um, on my Instagram for now and then maybe one day I can kind of let that grow on maybe a website. Um, and so the biggest questions that I get is... Um, I found a stray dog, what do I do? Right. Um, and so most people can't just adopt every dog that they find. And so right. I want them to ha know that you don't have to adopt the dog. You don't have to keep it. Um, nor do you always have to necessarily fear that if you take it to a shelter, it's going to get euthanized. Right. Those are always everyone's two fears. I found a dog, I can't keep it, and I don't want it to get killed. Right. Um, and so I want people to know that there's, there's options out there. You know, there's plenty of options. And so I want them to know what are open intake shelters. Where can you take a dog if you find it? It, um, you know, if it has behavioral or medical issues, what mm -hmm. can you do? Um, and so I want people to be able to come to my Instagram. I'm going to link her Instagram channel below. So if you guys are on the road in the future, remember this video, remember her because you can go to her Instagram and she's building up a database to help you guys find a no-kill shelter in your area. So really quick, what's the name of your, um, 
Instagram. Um, my Instagram is fast and the furriest underscore. Okay. <laughs> Which underscore. has a lot, its own story behind when it. When I first but. tried to find her, there's a lot of people with a similar name, so hit the link below. Yeah. But um, anyway, so you're building this database on Instagram. Yeah. So um, I want people to be able, basically it's going to be in my stories, um, which is the easiest way for people to find this so they don't have to scroll through my whole Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, so to be in my stories, my saved stories, um, and basically it'll say, you know, Oregon, Washington, Texas, and you can click on that right. one. And whether I've been to the shelter or not, I will have a feature of it somehow. Um, even if it's just the name and the link of mm -hmm. the shelter that you can go to. Um, but I want people to go to my stories and, okay, I found a dog, I'm in Oregon, click on Oregon. And right. you just kind of scroll through and see all the different places, different options that you have. This is a great resource for nomads because, I mean, in my experience, nomads are like pet lovers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I've never heard of a database that tells people where they can go. I'm sh yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm there sure might there be one out there, but I'm yeah. um, not from another nomad. You were trying to build this database for people. That's one thing. And then mm -hmm. the other thing that she's doing is she has these cool dog collars. Tell yeah. us about the dog collars. Yeah. So, um, up north, there there are strays up here, but it's not um, as big of a thing as it is in some other countries and southern states where it's a lot hotter. Yeah. Um, it's breeding season year round, um, especially in Texas. So um, these won't come in as handy up north, but if they do, great. Um, but I got these reflective collars um, to put on dogs. So for a couple of reasons. One, some dogs um, are almost impossible to catch and get in your car and take somewhere. Um, some dogs, um, there are some, sometimes there, there's no room at a shelter. And so you can't pick up, you know, 10, 15 dogs every day and constantly bring them in. I've tried it. Um, I bet you had my old shelter. Uh, yeah, I brought in so many dogs every day off. I was always bringing in a dog. Um, and so, and I can't do it alone. You know, I can't, not that I'm the only person out there picking up dogs. There's hundreds of people, um, if not more, Right. but we can't do it alone. And so a couple of reasons for the collars, one, they're reflective. So it can help dogs be seen, not get hit by cars. Since that's such a big deal for these dogs that are running loose. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I want them to all have tags on them. Um, because I want people to be aware of the kindness towards them. I want them to see them as not just a piece of garbage that's getting into your stuff and being gross. You know, they can't help that they're homeless. Right. Um, and so, and then I want people to have the resources. I want people to maybe see a dog that I put a collar on and maybe they, that might make them go well, yeah, because if dog. they find a stray with one of these collars, it has your Instagram mm -hmm. page on it, and then they can find out where they can take the dog. Exactly. Genius. Yep. So it'll have yes. a tag on it, and then yes. and then now that person knows, now they have that knowledge. Right. Now they can spread that knowledge. As right. a, you know, sure, I could, why put a collar on a dog when I could just pick it up and take it to a shelter real quick? But right. um, I can't do that with every single dog. I want right. everyone to do it. I want it to build in your community, in your city, in your state, right. in the U.S. Um, so if you can take it and you do. But yes. sometimes you you can't get them, mm -hmm. you can't take them, or there's just too many. You know, if you take them in, they're going to be euthanized. Yes. And so then you yeah. do the collars. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It won't yeah. be like any dog I find. I'm only going to put a collar on it. But there sometimes that is the only option. And um, people can get these collars and keep them in their RV mm -hmm. for themselves too. You got these on Amazon. Yep. Got them on Amazon. And okay. since I'll, Whole Foods has Amazon, you can. I'll put the link below. You guys. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Then you pick it up at the Amazon just, locker. Yeah. You just pick it up at a locker. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so um, there's different ones. And then the ones that I, I really like, and they get pretty expensive because if you buy them in bulk, they're a little bit cheaper, but I don't need 500 of them in my right. RV. Right. Um, and so they get kind of pricey. Uh, not horrible, though. Um, but these Max and Neo ones, um, these, every collar bought, they donate one mm -hmm. to a oh, rescue nice. shelter. Yeah. Nice. And so you get it's two for one. Nice. I'll put the link for that, too. Yeah. Now, I heard this. You haven't told me this, but do you have a GoFundMe page that's helping you buy these? I do. Yes. Yeah. yeah would, you, would you like to link that also? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, that way you can help her. You know, if you donate a couple bucks, you can help her buy these collars that she's putting on strays and getting the word out about yep. spaying and neutering, non-kill shelters. Yep. Yeah, and that helping good dogs. spread all those resources. Yeah, yeah, and maybe someone will find one with a collar, and they'll want to keep that dog. And now they know resources. You know, right. they know where they Very can get cool. it spayed and neutered. And the tags, you know, those get pricey. And so that's kind of the GoFundMe is, um, you know, to help with the collars, the tags, um, 
all that money is going strictly to this rescue stuff. You know, nice. I've got money in my savings for my own travels. Right. You right. know, and this, you know, while yeah, some you're of not it, supporting yourself on your, she's yeah. not supporting herself on the GoFundMe. This yeah. is for the dogs, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We've been here talking about the dogs and stuff, but you guys, I'm dying to show you her <laughs> RV. So can we get a tour? Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Yeah. Cool layout. So let's start at the front. You've got the overhead compartment. I see is a bed. Yep. And I, that, I, that was a big feature. That's why I bought this kind of RV. Um, I wanted my bed to be out of the way. <laughs> so um, that you actually up. sleep up there? Yep, I sleep up there. Uh, my two little ones sleep up there with me. <laughs> <laughs> just the little ones? Yep, just the little ones. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I wanted it to be out of the way since all I use it for is sleeping. I love um, that because you have big windows on all three sides. Yeah. So yep. you can look out at the stars at night mm -hmm. if you want to. Yep. That's yeah, great. It's really nice. Um, was your RV like this when you started, or did you gut it and create this floor plan yourself? I didn't fully gut it. Um, I did take things out. Um, in general, the floor plan was kind of this way already, but I did take things out. Okay, tell us about what you did. Um, so I, I re-upholstered and redid all of this stuff. Um, this table is actually my favorite part of the RV. Um, I love it. really good friends. Um, he has his own woodworking shop. Um, and so he custom made that for me and it's my favorite part of the RV. Um, and then it's I just beautiful. kind of, thank you. And I reupholstered other things. Um, there was a huge couch here. Um, and I'm only one person and did not need all that seating. So I did take the couch out. Um, and this part's kind of a work in progress. You know, like I was saying, there's a lot I could do to the RV, but gas and taking care of the pups is more important to me. So I just kind of fix things up as I go. I'm not overly concerned about having everything perfect um yeah so that i did i did put that in myself um i just got a piece of wood from home depot and stained it myself and um got some shelving stuff underneath and uh yeah and then it fits perfectly i wanted to have the most open spot for the dogs so um so yeah i'm able to have their little bed there and um stays nice and open for them nice nice <laughs> yeah. you have a lot of nice storage up here yes this is all original Yes. Yeah, this was all in here. All I redid actually was these handles. Um, and I got a little nice tube TV in here. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Check out yeah. 1995. Yep. That's a awesome. Tube and I've got a DVD player. Nice. I, I probably have a thousand DVDs in this RV. Really? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So many. My mom had a bunch and didn't want them. And so I, uh, I was like, well, I'll take them all. Nice. So now You're on that. the road, no signal. There's always Pulp Fiction. Exactly. Just right. Generate yeah. On right. Watch, right. Watch whatever. Right. Um, yeah. So tons of storage in here. Um, over here, yeah, I've got a fridge and freezer, which honestly right now is mostly storage. Did that um, come with it? It did. Yeah. What year is this RV? 2004. Well, that looks like... Yeah, the no. guy, yeah who, the guy I bought this from took such good care of this RV. Um, wow, and that's so, cool. And um, so I actually don't even really use the fridge. It's more of like a pantry. <laughs> Since I usually boondock, I don't, um, I can't turn it on a lot. Because you don't have solar. Exactly. I don't have solar right now. Mm -hmm. And the propane on it, um, for some reason, is not there's something that's not connecting. Tell us about the rest of the kitchen. Um, yeah, so the, the kitchen um, <laughs> has been a huge work in progress. Um, I painted everything and then the paint's been chipping off and I forgot my green paint, so I'm able to redo it. Um, it's a, uh, what do they call it? Shabby chic. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted it's a distressed look. Yeah. Um, yeah, I couldn't redo the countertops because again, money, um, so I actually just painted them black. Um, and they're they're okay. Looks but great. I did get some kind of you know new backsplash and things, ooh, so. that's pretty. Yeah, so I was. I able, love that sink. Yeah, I I love the sink and I do love this and see I was able to kind of redo a couple of things here and there, nothing mm -hmm. too fancy, but. Well, you can take not a new RV. And make it really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For not a lot of money. For not a lot of money. Exactly. That's awesome. Like, I didn't get to redo everything, but, but yeah. That's awesome. I'm so glad I got to see this. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. What else? Um, yeah. So bathroom. Um, and yeah, I can show you that. I do have a full, pretty much everything in there. I don't. Is it a wet bath or a dry bath? It's a dry bath. Yeah. Okay, and great. I don't, um, I actually don't shower that much. 
in in the RV. <laughs> like yeah, maybe me too. Once every few weeks. Yeah, I'll use yeah. It. What do you do? Too much water. Um, I will either, um, depending on the weather, I will either find a shower um, just in town somewhere mm -hmm. that I can pay for. I have taken gallon showers before too. If it's really really hot outside, I'll just get a gallon of water and yep. dump it on myself and shower. Yeah, yep. I love. <laughs> it's kind of hard with all the hair, but I love to shower outside in the desert. It, yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah. The first yep. time I yep. did it was yeah. In Utah. I used to have I used to have long hair. Yeah. When I started. It's hard. Oh. That takes like almost the whole gallon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's just my hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. So back here is, good boy, Ben. Um, is mostly kind of storage in my closet. Is this a toy hauler? Yeah. Oh yeah, my which, gosh. I love it. You could open up that whole back end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The whole back end opens like a U-Haul. Wow. <laughs> and I do sometimes when it's real nice weather, I'll open it. That's great. Um, so dog bed slash guest bed underneath if I flip the mattresses. Right. <laughs> Lots of space for the dogs. Yes, show it off, Char. <laughs> That's right. Um, yeah, so it's mostly storage. You know, I, I moved with a lot of things, and so I'm able to kind of keep everything back here. Still able to crate train a puppy. <laughs> right. He still has plenty of room back here. And then yeah. I, I made this little closet sort of thing. Show it to us. Um, I just kind of put the, I got different pipes and put them together and bolted it to the wall. Oh my gosh, I love it. Um, and then baskets, I bolted those. Um, nice. Yeah, so I was able to kind of make a little tiny makeshift closet. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Hello, pretty babies. Oh no, I'm sorry. Hi. Is mama training you? You sweet boy. What? Oh, yeah. What is this up here? Yeah, you can actually just go right up to the these little stairs. Coming Shut out. up! Yeah. That's an, oh my gosh, that's a <laughs> roof porch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not nothing fancy up there, but. Oh my god, my dream. But okay, yeah, the I'm back opens up, and there's a rooftop. Yeah. Porch. <laughs> No way! Yeah, and it's such easy access. You can just climb right up there. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't we do the whole interview up I know, there? we should have just sat up there. <laughs> what type of an RV is this? Um, it is a 2004 Thor Four Winds Fun Mover. Fun Mover? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and what kind of a chassis does it have? What's um, the engine? Is it a Dodge or a Ford? Or? It's a Ford. A Ford. And a gas or diesel? Gas. What kind of gas mileage do you get? I get probably about six to eight miles per gallon. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And uh, can I ask how much you paid for it? I paid about 20 grand for it. Okay. And I am still paying it off. How does it drive? Good. It's um, the first time I ever drove it. I was like white knuckling. I sure. was terrified, but um, it drives really well. It's fantastic. It's super easy to drive. Um, I've gotten really used to it. I can maneuver in and out of things if I get stuck anywhere. <laughs> how is it in the wind? Um, pretty good, pretty good. It gets maybe a little bit loud, but um, it's pretty high up, so mm -hmm. it's still easy to get places and kind mm -hmm. of off road a little bit. Nice. Um, I have I had really nice stairs that came out and in, and on my last trip um, I broke them. <laughs> I went off roading and it they fully <laughs> bent and I had to remove them completely. Oh my gosh! What did your family think of your decision to hit the road and your friends? Um, I think mostly everyone was pretty excited about it. Nice. Um, probably kind of confused, like, wh what? You're traveling in an RV and wandering around. Um, like, what does that even mean? Because most people don't even really know what the lifestyle is. Um, or a lot of people, not, I wouldn't say most. Um, but they were probably most concerned that I was alone. Everyone would be like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like, that's going to be awesome with the dogs. And, but who's going with you? I'm like, the dogs. Six dogs. <laughs> Six barking dogs that will protect me. Yeah. Um, so that was probably everyone's biggest concern is, is going by myself. And uh, more dogs coming? Any gosh. more dogs? Nope. No more dogs coming. <laughs> um, I'm at my limit. A couple of them are pretty old. Um, so no more dogs for me, not for a long time. But Until you find one that you love. Yep, exactly. Yep. Until I start rescuing again. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. I want to thank Alexandra for letting me interview her and uh, seeing her rig. You guys, like I said before, her Instagram link is going to be below. Follow her. I'm also going to put a link for her GoFundMe page, which pays for the dog collars for her rescue efforts only. And also, if you want to get your own reflective collars, I'll put the link for that below as well. And uh, I just want to say thanks. Thanks again for letting us see your life. Of course, and thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right, you guys. Everybody have happy travels out there. And Bye. be free. <laughs>